inhaled route of administration. Several devices and procedures may be used to produce a fine drug carrying mist that can be inhaled deep into the lungs. When a medication enters the lungs, it moves almost immediately to the lining of the bronchi or alveoli, then into the capillaries. Inhalation is the most efficient method to get medicine directly to the airway. The total dose is low and there is little chance for the medication to have a systemic effect. Two common ways to deliver drugs to the respiratory tract are handheld metered dose inhalers and a nebulizer. Several inhaled drugs such as bronchodilators which open up the bronchial airways and corticosteroids which are used as effective anti-inflammatory agents are administered using a metered dose inhaler. There are two types of metered dose inhalers. The first type delivers a fine mist from a canister when the device is triggered. An example of this type of device is an albuterol rescue inhaler. This inhaler is generally used with an acute episode. The second type is usually used for long-term maintenance. The person will inhale a metered dose of powdered medication into the lungs. An example of this type of medication would be Advair. Steps for administering inhaled medication, metered dose inhaler. Gather all of the supplies you will need. Medication, a glass of water to rinse the mouth if inhaling a corticosteroid, a spacer if applicable, the MAR, and the person receiving the medication. Wash your hands. For each person, match the person and the medication to the person's name and the medications that are due on the MAR. Always use the five rights plus two each and every time you administer or supervise the self-administration of a medication. Shake the inhaler canister well. Remove the cap and turn the inhaler with the mouthpiece on the bottom and the canister sticking out the top. Have the person hold the canister about an inch from in front of their mouth. This is about the width of two or three fingers. Have the person blow air out of his lungs until they feel empty. Then begin to inhale slowly through his mouth until their lungs feel full. As the person begins to inhale, compress the drug canister to release the metered dose of drug. Depress the canister only one time. Have the person hold his breath for a count of 10 or as long as possible. Instruct the person to exhale through pursed lips as though he or she was whistling. This technique will produce back pressure that keeps the bronchioles open, thereby increasing the absorption and diffusion of the medication. If the person is not coordinated enough to use the inhaler as previously described, he or she may need a spacer. This allows the aerosol to disperse in the chamber. Then the person can exhale then inhale the medication from the spacer. Document the administration in the MAR. Return the medication to its proper storage location. When using a meter dose inhaler that dispenses a powder, first load the dose of the medication as indicated in the directions. Have the person exhale blowing out as much air as possible. Have the person put the mouthpiece in his or her mouth and suck in the powdered medication. Have them hold their breath for a count of 10 or as long as they can, then exhale through pursed lips. When using a metered dose inhaler with a canister, do not put the mouthpiece directly in the mouth. The medication will not be dispersed enough in the mouth. The majority of the medication will remain in the mouth and in the back of the throat rather than being inhaled into the lungs. Some inhaled bronchodilators may cause restlessness, palpitations, which means it feels like the heart is skipping a beat, nervousness and hypersensitivity reactions such as rash, hives, and bronchospasms. Call the doctor right away if the person's shortness of breath worsens, the medicine becomes less effective, or if he or she develops palpitations nervousness or hypersensitivity reactions such as hives, 
rash, or bronchospasms. If the person has both a bronchodilator and a corticosteroid inhaler, do it at the same time. Always use the bronchodilator first and wait five minutes before using the corticosteroid. When the meditation is taken in this order, the bronchial tubes will be as open as possible when the corticosteroid is taken. Always wait at least one minute before doses of a single inhaled drug. Nasal sprays. The most commonly administered nasal drugs are vasoconstrictors which coat and shrink swollen mucous membranes and corticosteroids which reduce inflammation caused by allergy or nasal polyps. Have the client gently blow their nose prior to administering the medication. For nasal sprays, you should prime the application device before the first use. Insert the applicator into the nostril away from the center of the nose and release the medication. Have the person breathe in as if sniffing a flower. If the medication is in a soft plastic squeeze bottle, be sure the bottle stays in an upright position so a mist is introduced into the nose rather than a stream of medication. Nose drops. For nose drops, have the person gently blow their nose, then lie down on their back. Gently push the tip of his or her nose to open the nostrils completely. Place the dropper approximately one third of an inch, one centimeter, inside the nostril, angling the tip of the dropper slightly towards the inner corner of the eye. Dispense the correct number of drops into each nostril. Have the person keep their head tilted back for about five minutes. Encourage the person to spit out any medication that runs into his or her throat. Have the person breathe through their mouth. If they begin to cough, help them sit up and observe for several minutes for possible breathing problems. The basic steps to set up and use the nebulizer are as follows. 1. Wash your hands well. 2. Connect the air hose to the nebulizer machine. 3. Fill the medicine cup with the prescribed medication by removing the top and placing the liquid into the cup. To avoid spills, close the medicine cup snugly and always hold the container straight up and down. 4. Attach the air hose and the mouthpiece or mask to the medicine cup. 5. Breathe in the mist until it is all gone. This may take 10 to 15 minutes or more. 6. Turn off the machine when the medicine is completely gone and there is no more mist being produced. 7. Wash the medicine cup and mouthpiece with water and allow it to air dry until your next treatment. Cleaning the nebulizer. Clean the nebulizer after each use. Take the nebulizer apart, removing the mouthpiece or mask. You don't need to clean the tubing. Rinse the parts with warm tap water. Shake off the excessive water and place the parts on a clean towel. Allow them to air dry. After the last treatment of the day, take apart and clean with a mild detergent. Rinse all parts with warm water, place on a clean towel, and allow to air dry. Disinfect using the manufacturer's instructions. The Cleveland Clinic recommends that every three days after washing the equipment, soak the mouthpiece, face mask, and nebulizer cup in a vinegar solution of one part white vinegar and three parts water. Allow the parts to soak for 20 minutes, then rinse with warm water and allow to air dry on a clean towel. You're taking care of Amy, an 18 year old with a history of autism. You have tried to explain to her how to properly use her inhaler, but she continues to put the inhaler into her mouth and gives the two puffs prescribed one after the other. She complains that the rescue inhaler never works and that she wants to use a nebulizer. What can you do to help her get a better result from her inhaler? Perfect. By getting a spacer, she will be able to inhale more of the medication. The spacer allows the medication to disperse in the chamber while she exhales. Then she can put the mouthpiece in her mouth as she does with the inhaler. It also allows for more control over dispensing of the medication. You can dispense one puff, let her inhale the medication, but wait a minute, then dispense the second puff.